Hello and welcome uh, to uh, Higher Options. My name is Ian O'Coyley. We're going to be we're discussing apprenticeships today. I'm joined by Alan McGrath, who's the Director of Apprenticeships um, at Solace, which is the body, the state body that uh, is responsible for apprenticeships and uh, further education and training. I'm also joined by Evan Killalay, who's a key account manager at Citibin, uh, Ali Miley, uh, who is an apprentice at ESB, and Jake Buckley, who's an apprentice at AIB. Sorry, Ali uh, Miley is at the ESB, I should say. Um, but over to you, first of all, Alan. Um, can you give our viewers um, an, a description or explain to them maybe why they could consider uh, an apprenticeship after school? Hi, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, sure. I might, uh, maybe three reasons um, spring to mind. Um, first of all, an apprenticeship is a way to achieve a qualification. So most people, when they're considering their, their education and training options, have sight on the fact that they will be doing a program that leads to uh, an award, a recognized award, and apprenticeships offer you the path to that education qualification. It's simply a different way of learning. Um, you combine uh, work with, with, with study um, that leads you to the qualification. So it's very important to, to understand that apprenticeship does give you an education qualification that is recognized on the national framework of qualifications. They are available from level five to uh, currently to level 10. Actually, we have our first ever level 10 apprenticeship in Ireland. So the first point I would make is it's a route to a, a qualification the same way other education programs are. The second thing I would say is you're, an empl you're employed. You have a job when you become an apprentice. So you, you learn on the job and you learn off the job. You get a job through an employer who's registered to take on an apprentice and you use the, what's called, what we call an earn and learn model. So you're earning a salary, uh, but you're also training and doing your education piece which brings you around to getting that qualification. So it's a fantastic route uh, combining a world, the world of work, having a job, having your own salary, that independence, with getting your education qualifications um, and doing an exciting career in, in, in something that you, that you are really, really interested in. And then the third thing I would say in terms of why would you consider an apprenticeship? Frankly, there are so many options right now for apprenticeship. Um, there are 58 programs apprenticeship programs at the moment. Um, I was just saying a moment ago there, uh, in 2016, we had 25 programs. So there's a, there's a vast array of programs. And if, if you allow me, I'll just call out a couple of, a few, sorry, a few areas, a few, um, a few career options that you could get through uh, apprenticeship. You could become a plumber, a carpenter, a lab analyst, work in financial services. You could work in sales, IT, hairdressing, engineering, insurance, um, practitioner, accounting technician. Uh, there are so many options available and all of those options are, are described in detail um, with, further, with, 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 with questions and answers on our, on our website, apprenticeship.ie. So a huge, huge range of options then, um, Alan. And um, Ali, I might jump to you. You're at the ESB. Um, can you tell me why you chose your particular apprenticeship? Well, for myself, I chose the ESB for its variety of work within the job itself. There's different sections you can go into. There's overhead construction, underground metering, and there's so much more. And as well as that, I love working outdoors and I just wasn't going to be able to sit in a room for too long. So it's great to be able to be outdoors and doing so much work. And... What type of work, you might be able to give us maybe a description of the, your typical day. How, is, how does that work for you? Yeah, so at the moment I'm working in overhead construction, so that involves in working on the lines. So at the moment, like, I could be doing new connections, so that's bringing electricity to a new home, or could be fixing an old house that needed a new connection in it within. As well as that, there's... Um, so much more. I could be out on LV and MV lines, working out on the poles every day, or as well as that, I could just be on a 10 KV job and there's just a lot of work in it, but it's a really enjoyable work. You do enjoy it. That's, that's a very important point as well, that you know, we spend so much time working that it's important that we actually get to enjoy what, what it is we do. Um, Evan, yeah. I, might, I might jump over to you and um, ask you why you'd recommend uh, your, your um, course of action as a, as a career path to, to viewers. 
Um, for, for me, I am in sales before I started the sales apprenticeship, and it, this is a, a new course that the MSLETB brought out. Um, I think they're the only ones that are actually doing the sales apprenticeship in Ireland. Um, so, like, sales is it's it's a it's a performance based career. Uh, the more you sell, the more you grow with the business. Um, for anyone with a competitive streak and the desire to get a reward from their work levels. Um, it's a key motivator and, and something that will drive a su successful career over the years, you know, so it just gives you good focus. Mm -hmm. And um, is there much kind of like additional work involved when you start out on your, your apprenticeship, Evan, there? Like, do you, did you have to kind of put in additional hours to, you know, above and beyond the work that you were tasked with doing each day? Um, so... Normal working week for me would be Monday to Friday and Tuesday mornings, Thursday mornings, we have a two hour session uh, with the MSL ETB online. Um, it kind of, it works well. There is a bit of study, maybe an hour or two every evening um, on a Tuesday or Thursday evening. But to tell you the truth, you're, you're earning, you're learning and the reward is you, you will end up getting a certificate in sales and understand it to the best of your ability by the end of it. And on, on that earning and learning point, I mean, the, it, it's a really, it's a very valid point and one worth exploring, I think, um, Evan. How important was it for you to be able to, to actually start earning immediately as soon as you started on the course? Uh, well, because I was in sales already with Citibin, it was our learning and empowerment manager, Alwyn, that pointed out the course to me that I wouldn't have known other than that. Uh, and it wouldn't affect my work and week. I'd still get to work normally, uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and do as much as I can on a Tuesday and a Thursday when the course is on. Uh, but rather being a rough diamond, uh, to get out there to earn money and learn at the same time, it's something that college can't give you. So to me, an apprenticeship is it's, it's a great setup for you to earn money while you're learning. It's, it's as simple as that. And Jake, over to you. Uh, you're you're at AIB. Um, you might you might just tell us a little bit about uh, your work, what it involves, and and uh, whether you enjoy it or not. Yeah. Um, so I work as a data analyst. Um, it's basically I suppose driving reports and looking at underlying numbers that uh, people make decisions on. I suppose, and it's kind of I work in financial services, but it's a skill and it and a, a qualification that I'm doing that can be used in many different industries. Um, uh, I work four days a week. I do college on Wednesdays. It's all online now, um, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And is there much commitment involved with that as well? Does it require much by way of extra hours? or? Yeah, so it's, as uh, Evan was saying, like there is, you know, they might have to do an assignment on the weekend or, you know, there might be a bit of extra extra time doing it. But in terms of work, you're given full support from the team inside. Um, you're not expected to make up a day's work that you might miss for college. And um, the supports are there to help you if things are struggling or whatever. Like there's a lot of a lot of help there if you need it. And does the um, the work you do does it does it overlap with your studies? Like you know, is there can can you see a direct link between what you're studying and do you get to actually put that into action as it were on the job? Then, yeah, most definitely. So I'm doing a uh, financial service analytics higher diploma. That's my qualification as the apprenticeship. And uh, our one of our first modules was data programming, and I actually managed to use a data programming language that we were taught in that module, bring it into work and I suppose bring a new way of looking at things for our, the wider team that wouldn't have been used before. So it's a great value to the team, us being on the apprenticeship as well. So you find then that the two complement each other, do they? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's great. And back to you, Alan. Um, wh where should students look to when they're considering an apprenticeship? You know, there's so many, there's such a wide array of uh, apprenticeships available. Mm. Where, where should they look to in terms of um, maybe getting advice as to what would best suit them or, you know, what, what, what course Absolutely. they would pursue? Uh, the, fir the first thing I would recommend is log on to apprenticeship.ie. Um, each of the 58 programs are listed there with, with a variety of information, particular to those. Um, particular to those programs, there will be things like, so if you pick the accounting technician one, for example, the first FAQ is what does an, what does an accounting technician do? 
What skills will I learn? How do I become an apprentice? Um, so we'll talk you through that process. And then we include, um, on top of that, we include contact details for people in, in, who are managing or involved in those particular apprenticeships. So there's some very direct information. Uh, there's a brilliant overview there for both employers and indeed um, for, for, for learners thinking of becoming an apprentice. On top of that, um, the education and training boards, um, Evan mentioned one there. There are 16 education and training boards. And within those training boards, they have training advisors or, or authorized officers, as they're called. Um, and those guys are, are available to assist apprentices um, about the apprenticeship route uh, to potentially link them with employers in their region. So there's a few ways of, of, of accessing, but first port to call apprenticeship.ie. Great. And in terms of the typical apprenticeship, like, do they take, can you tell our viewers maybe how long it would, they should expect an apprenticeship to take? Does it vary uh, from course to course? Absolutely. Absolutely. They vary between two and four years. So what happens is traditionally the, the kind of craft programs like carpentry and joinery, plumbing, Ali's program that she's doing now um, are, are four years in, in length and they work on the basis of uh, periods of on the job training and then there are kind of like blocks of off the job training. So the off the job meaning you go to an education and training facility and do uh, periods of do periods of theory and practical training. Um, in, in, in some of our more newer apprenticeships or more recent apprenticeships like Jake and, and Evans, you do, you do it's it's different and and they're designed around the type of industry you may you may be doing four days a week um on working working in an office for example and then on a friday or another day or, or a day in the week you will be concentrating on your learning and your study and catching up on that side of it so there are different models somewhere between two years and four years depending on the program but all of that information is on is on the website and people can look at it but there are different models to suit uh, to suit people's needs and different options for that so it depends on on the the trade in question the type of career path people might Absolutely. want to take and so on and then there's also like i know that there are you know it's it third level it's traditionally been a uh, the next step in, in Irish education. Mm. People have kind of traditionally expected that once the Leaving Cert is completed, the people would tend to go to, to third level. Um, but that's, that is changing now, um, and thankfully so, because we do know that we have fairly high levels of dropouts uh, in first year in, in some courses. Um, and, and, you know, there is a path to degrees and higher qualifications through apprenticeships, isn't there? Isn't that right, Alan? Absolutely. All education and training options, uh, there, are, there are no real bad ones. You know, um, it's about finding something that you're interested in and it's about finding the path that works for you. And with, with apprenticeship, like, like other education and training, they set you up in an apprenticeship. There's, there's a slight difference in that you are working. And when you finish your two years or your four years, you will have two or four years uh, work experience in that industry. That's, that's quite invaluable um, and it's very different. If you do a four-year degree, you will do a four-year degree, which is mainly classroom-based, uh, COVID aside, mainly classroom-based, um, and you might do some work experience depending on the program. With an apprenticeship, you are working from day one till the last day you're doing it. And that's the difference there. However, like every other education and training program and further education or higher education, it gives you a qualification, but it also puts you on a pathway. I don't want to scare these guys who are halfway through their apprenticeship, but they may be, when they finish their program, they may start thinking about, can I top this up with another piece of maybe a management program or something like that? When Ali, when Ali decides to set up her own electrical business in a few years, she'll be, she'll be looking for management skills and there, her apprenticeship is going to set her up for that. And there are a myriad of options short and long term that the further education training system and the higher education system will make available to people. And I might just jump quickly around to each of the, uh, to the apprentices there. Um, uh, Ali, um, do, you, do you see that you might pursue um, even more education at the end of your apprenticeship or how do you see it panning out? Well, at the end of my apprenticeship, I'd really hope to get a job with the ESB. It's not entirely a option but the harder I work within the ESB the more likely I'd be able to get a job at the end of it so really I'd love to end up in the ESB and make my way up throughout the ESB itself. Great and Jake maybe over to you now um, how about yourself um, where do you see it leading you to? Yeah I'm uh, putting serious thought into doing a master's 
I wouldn't have when I started out. But I suppose, especially the last year, has been able to see the value that the topics that I'm learning in college, being able to bring into the team and you know, really getting recognized for that. I'd like to be able to you know, pursue more and educate myself more, most definitely. And do you find that, you know, that, that it, it's something that's definitely helping you in terms of your knowledge and in terms of working with other people, um, Jake, there, when it comes to what you're learning and picking up on your, in, in your apprenticeship course? Yeah, no, definitely. Like some things do overlap and some topics where I would have done them in years in work for years, but it's definitely interesting to, I suppose, get a, a different perspective college, you know, the traditional book learning way or you know taught way rather than little bad habits you pick up yourself so it's it's definitely definitely good and evan over to you then how about yourself where, where do you see it taking you well look at, for, for me i'm 38 years of age i'm not straight out of school so something i probably should have learned before this point was i should have gone back to education um probably a bit sooner but look at, it's never too late to go back to education so uh i would so far, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying the, the, the apprenticeship. Um, the, the, the main thing that it'll, it'll do for me, I think, is grow my skill sets and it'll give me more higher options to use the Irish Times thing that we're at. So, but it'll give me more options going through life. And I think it's something that anybody could take coming out of secondary school or if they don't happen to, to go through their first year in a college course that they find out isn't good enough for them. I think looking at an apprenticeship uh, it's, it's a very good way to make money, uh, you get paid to learn, uh, you make contacts throughout the course, uh, as well as through the business that you're working in, that, that, that you're in the apprenticeship with. Uh, and most courses you come with them in to, so you're not just going in there to try and learn something and it's all on you. You have at every stage, at every point and every opportunity. So it's a very good uh, process in order to get an education from it and a job. So. Great, thanks very much. And Alan, so we have a few questions coming in here from uh, viewers, and uh, I might just ask you, we'll go through them, but uh, one is that uh, one of our viewers wants to do a uh, motor apprenticeship uh, in regard mm -hmm. to job training, on the job training. Is there a set, is there a set training center, uh, or is there more than one? Oh, there would be more than one. Um, that would be more than one. So when, um, how it works is when, when someone is on their apprenticeship, they're in an on-the-job phase. When they when they're doing what I call the off-the-job, which is their which is their training in the training centre or the Institute of Technology, they will be scheduled for that um, across the, um, the 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 various training centres that we have available to us, and they'll get they'll get written notice of that uh, well in advance of their training, and as would their employer to allow to ensure that their employer is fully up to speed that they're being called for training. And then another question then is, um, after you've done an apprenticeship, do you have to do a degree or can you have a sustainable career without going on to college? I suppose it depends Absolutely. on the... There are, there are multiple, uh, thousands of examples of, of apprentices who finish their apprenticeship in, in whatever they do, who go on to work, have successful careers in companies like, like, like the ESB, as, as mentioned earlier on. Or um, you'll find many of them go and set up their own business in their, in their particular area. It depends, on, it depends on what they want to do. But absolutely, an apprenticeship is a route to an exciting, sustainable career. And as we discussed earlier on, there's uh, often this focus on the uh, the leaving cert, and um, there's a you know the points race is infamous now at this stage, of course. And uh, oftentimes people might just miss out by a point or two on a course, but there are apprenticeships that allow you uh, a kind of a roundabout way into pursuing that course. And one question that one of the readers, uh, or one of our, our our viewers, has sent in to us is. Uh, what apprenticeship would let you, get you into doing engineering uh, as a as a topic, mm -hmm. a subject? Yeah, there are engineering apprenticeships um, on the website. Um, I have it open here, and like for example, there are services management. There's industrial insulation. There's manufacturing engineering. There's manufacturing technology. There's a suite of engineering apprenticeships on apprenticeship.ie under the, you'll see them all, there's a whole list of them. Um, I won't go through them all, but there, there is various apprenticeships in that space. And um, so if that's your interest, look at these, have a look at them, go through them. Um, there are contact details for each of those apprentices, apprenticeships that are there. Um, and you can follow that up. Absolutely, there's a route there.
And another thing about that, I suppose, is that traditionally, um, you know, people would have to maybe attend, like the universities are tend to be in the larger cities. So, uh, you know, people often have to kind of move to the larger cities if they wanted to pursue a particular course or other. Um, whereas with uh, apprenticeships, they're spread out all over the country, isn't it? Absolutely correct. Yeah, they are spread across. The The education part of it will be in either one of the 16 education uh, and training boards, which are which are in which are spread across every county, um, or they will be in one of the institutes of technology, depending on what phase they're at or phase they're at in their in their institution. Or in 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 Evan's case, uh, or sorry, in Jay's case, there's National College of Ireland, which is in Dublin, but they are spread across the entire country, accessible to people, and that's where we have our training centres spread out across the coast, down the south, in the northwest, in the northeast, in the Midlands. There are training centres for apprenticeship. Which is great because it means, well. it means people don't have to worry so much about maybe renting accommodation and so on. Um, another question that we have here is a question about money. What kind of money should apprentices expect to earn? I'm answering that one. I mean, that's that depends. Sorry, it's 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 a bit of a non-answer. It depends because um, there are there are ways that it's done. So first of all, you're you're an employee of the company that hire you to become an apprentice. So they will pay you. It's like um, anyone here taking a job anywhere. There's a there's a there's a there's a set salary rate, and and you'll be paid that rate. Um, in in craft apprenticeships, there are scales as people move through their phases. Um, so that's the way that works, and there are agreed rates for those. Um, but it's it's between it's between the uh, the apprentice and their employer. Um, I don't have figures off my, off my head across fifty eight programs. I just I simply don't know what people are paid. Um, but but that will be between that the employer and the apprentice, and they can they can certainly find that out with their employer. That's great. And in terms of the experience, that's one of the big pluses of doing uh, an apprenticeship as well, in that you, oftentimes if you have to study, if you need to have a, um, or if you go to college, if you go to third level, you'll possibly spend your, f your full week studying and you won't get the chance to, to work uh, other than perhaps in a part-time job and so on. But Alan, um, how important is it for people to be able to learn on the job uh, as they learn? It's it's crucial. It's crucial. It's such it's such a brilliant way for 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 people to learn the skills. I mean, you will. I, I heard Evan say a minute ago, you will create contacts. That alone, um, having that ability to work in industry and make a network, develop a network of contacts in your company across your industry. Um, and there are so many different skills that you learn. You will be learning your whatever your technical skills if you want. So for for Jake, he's learning about data analytics and financial services, but you will also learn different things that have that you only learn when you're working how do you make connections with people how do you work meetings how do you manage staff how do you report to staff how to organize yourself there are so many different things that working on a job give you um the experience that you just don't get unless you're in in the thick of it doing it and that's that's most definitely the distinguishing feature of an apprenticeship Great. And Evan, I might just jump back to you there, if you don't mind. Um, can you tell us just a little bit about the, the actual subjects that you're learning uh, as part of your apprenticeship? Um, so today now we would have been, we, we had assignments and stuff too. So we're, we're just through the first module of it, which is sales fundamentals, which gives you uh, the basic concept of sales from when you go looking for a new customer, which is called prospecting, uh, to when you close the sale or you, let's say you, you, you'd sell your service or your product and then the most important part of sales is the follow-up, uh, to follow up with customers that you have signed up and to continue building the relationships with them. Um, because it, it's, it's like making new friends. If you, you want to keep them happy and you want to keep them engaged and you want to listen to them. And uh, yeah, so look at it, it's a very good course. We're moving on now to marketing, so we're going on to a different section. Um, that's starting come Tuesday. And we learn about different um, different marketing strategies and up to date and like marketing is a constantly evolving uh, subject. So what marketing was ten or fifteen years ago would have changed now. So for me, it's very good to learn the the, the new styles of marketing, but I can't really answer it again until I go through it. Um, Great, thank you. And um, Ali, over to you then. Um, are, are, do you get to, you, you mentioned getting out and being on the job and loving the kind of the, being out and about and so on. Is there much office work or is there any office work involved in what you do or do you, is there another side to it beyond being out and working on jobs? 
So there isn't much office work in it, but there is training. So we have our own training um, school up in Port Leash. You'd spend eight weeks up there in your first year and then throughout the year, you'd spend a few weeks up there just in training, learning how to do certain as aspects of the job itself. Um, a lot of it is outdoors, though. A lot of it's on-the-job training. You wouldn't have too much um, training-wise, but you'd be in college for phase two, four, and six. So there is a bit of college work in it. There's not too much office work itself, but that's about it now. And in terms of the type of kind of assessments that you do, can you just tell us maybe a little bit about that? How do they, do you have to sit exams or how often do you have to do assessments, Sally? Yeah, so when you're doing your training up in the school, you have, um, you do a different kind of section every week and you learn about that in the classroom. Some aspects will be learning outside. Um, at the end of the week, you'll have an exam on it. So you really want to be passing your exams to start. They're not too hard. Like it's what you've been learning all week. So you'll get a good understanding for what is needed in the job and what has to be done and what safety procedures are going on in the job itself. Great. And Jake, how about yourself then? How, how does it work for you in terms of uh, assessments and exams? Yeah, so it kind of depends on the module. Some of them are more like data programming, be, make more sense to do like a project show your knowledge and put it into real use into a real data set. And then there's other ones more theory based like financial markets that would have an exam yet. And they'd be done. So we'd have one module per semester um, and they'd be done at the end of it. So after Christmas uh, at May and then August would be our uh, end of year, end of module assessments. Very good. And um, do you need to spend much time studying then in your own time or how does it work? Uh, so you're given the full day, which is a lot of time. We have independent study time and we've independent stu uh, protected study days that uh, NCI have agreed with uh, our companies. So similar to like uh, a midterm that normal college students would get, we'd get a week uh, week off where we're not expected to work on the day where we can still, you know, catch up on assignments or if we know we have a test coming up, put the study then as well. But there, there is there is some time where you need to put on the weekends, but it's it's not, it's just it's standard what you expect of college. That's great. Thanks very much. So we've a, a very good, a wide kind of uh, array of. Um, of, of careers there um, and a, a very good selection of, uh, of possibilities uh, discussed. And Alan, we might just finish up with you then. Um, so like perceptions are clearly changing in terms of, uh, of, of, of apprenticeships. Um, so you think it's a definitely, it's a good opportunity for people. There is a huge number of uh, course options out there. Um, so what would your advice be for people now, just as who might be coming up towards the, you know, the, it's, it's their last Christmas in school, let's say, what steps should they take before they, you know, get to the last uh, exam of the Leaving Cert, let's say, in terms of how they go about applying for, for, for an apprenticeship? Absolutely. Yeah, the first thing is never, never panic. There are, there are so many options available to you. Um, it's a daunting thing doing your Leaving Cert and thinking that the decision that you make is the is the final decision there are there are there are uh, there are always ways of learning and training so there's so many options so the first thing is not to panic there's plenty of options but do your research um, most people find um, that when they do something that interests them they get the best benefit out of it now that's easier for some people but that's that's by doing your research following what you're interested in look it up talk to people find out somebody always knows an apprentice or someone in, a, in, a, in an industry reach out to people um, talk to the ETBs and their training advisors they will guide you through it have a look at our website have a look at what makes you feel comfortable keep your options open but be sure that an apprenticeship as I said at the start leads to if you do a degree level apprenticeship I think um, Jake might be doing a level eight I think at the moment for example that's that that level eight is equivalent to any other level eight that's on the framework of qualifications there is no difference you just do it different in a different way um, as I said at the start um, and so follow follow what you're interested in and there's plenty of options there on apprenticeship.e for you to look at. That's great. Okay, listen, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today and I hope um, uh, best of luck with the, the rest of your apprenticeships, of course. And um, again, just to mention the website, it's apprenticeships.ie. Thank you.